Eden Cause here with Just Be, and we are about to take a spiritual boom. We are at an unprecedented time in human history where we are transitioning from 3D to 5D within the great spiritual awakening. This video and audio podcast is the place for you to find your truth beyond politics, your sovereignty, your voice. Let's kick up your vibration now. By the way, each episode ends with the Just Be practice to do just that. P.S. Just to know a little bit more about me, I'm a psychological empath, meditation master, dimensional healer, all the things to help you within this ascension. To learn more about me, visit me at EdenJustBe.com. And let's get this party started. Eden, Just Be spiritual boom in association with the grassroots warrior network and i love being a co-anchor on the grassroots warrior network because we we all heart so i'm on grassroots and i'm on my own networks and i just i just i just love it rishma welcome thank you yes thank you for being here i'm so glad and we're gonna um we met uh via sherry divban's 5d school the art must creative learning center so look that up as well and today we are going to be talking about possibly about star seed parenting as well as your wow story about memory loss um and to go ahead and let you guys know her listening and watching our meditation at the end that Rishma is going to guide is going to be probably 10 minutes might be 15. So go ahead. It could be a little bit longer than we normally do. So just get ready for that. It's going to be a good one. And she knows I'm going to chat for just a moment and then go into her bio. So my shirt that you see on me within by the time. Oh, so by the awesome. Yes, yes. I'm so excited. Thank you. I, I can't collect my calmness or I can't be calm about it. Within two weeks, by the time this podcast is live, should have swag available. So this is one of the ones I got four samples this week. So we altered some things a little bit. So they're all Ascension based, uh, 3D to 5D, Great Awakening. Yet there's some controversial ones in there too. And a dear friend, a client of mine last night said, it's like using your voice without you having to use your voice, which I think is so awesome. So check them out. I am again, so excited. And my logo's on the back because why not? I mean, I'm putting out these t-shirts, so I'm going to put my logo on the back, but it isn't about selling me or selling my company or whatever. It's about being a part of this and saying that you're a part of this because I, for someone like you're, if you're at the grocery store and you see someone else wearing a star seed shirt, you can just go, oh, it starts conversations. It brings us together. It's just it's just beautiful. It's your, you're bringing in your truth, Eden. Yes, exactly. See, awesome. we're, we're going to be talking about this. And um, potentially we're also going to have an affiliate program. So if you like these and you want to sell them and make some money for yourself, I mean, the more we can propagate this, the better. Two, two more things. Um, I had a really, really um, interesting spiritual experience this weekend. So when we're done, I'm going to share some of that because uh, I've been thinking about it a lot. Because one of the things is that I got is uh, the way that we bury people here in the West, it's just dark. So I want to discuss that a little bit. Um, and I want to talk about uh, Abulesk, if I'm saying that correctly as well. So it was a, a a spiritual battle beyond belief. And then one more thing before we get started. I want to make it crystal clear. Um, been talking about Ozempic on the last couple of shows. So when I'm here, reach my, so you know, when, when, like I really try to be there with my guests, but I also, you know, produce the show. There are certain things that I'm aware of. Like when uh, Dr. Charlie Cropley was on last week, we had a whole bunch of, um, we went in and out. So I was listening, but paying attention to that at the same time. So I, I just want to be clear because there probably, I didn't respond to something that I normally would have. When we get into weight loss, it's an incredibly complicated issue. It isn't just about diet and exercise. There's so much emotional uh, that's within it. So for example, a lot of people put on a lot of weight just as a way to guard against, you know, against their heart. For me, example, I used to, I worked with a nutritionist a while back and there was a thing about, you know, calories in equals the calories out. I'm like, that does not apply to me. Um, cause I'm thin. It doesn't matter. You know, I just don't gain weight. 
it's, you know, and, and we're, we're all different. So no diets work the same thing for everyone. If it's a vegetarian diet, keto diet, raw diet, everyone is different. So I, I really want to acknowledge that. If I may add something to that. Yes, please. Weight loss and weight gain is nothing else but emotional baggage. Mm -hmm. So yes. I have seen people who are extremely thin and they have emotional baggage and extremely obese mm -hmm. and they do not have emotional baggage. So it's all got to do with how one is conditioned that too again it's so complicated it mm -hmm. isn't just you know that you diet and exercise and it's going to come off okay that is not the case so mm -hmm. acknowledging that as well all right may i read some about you please thank you okay in new jersey rishma shaw for more than a decade has been designing and she has taught workshops as well as mentoring one-on-one -on -one in person as well as online to a variety, to a diverse variety of long-term soul family students who journeyed together through many dimensions and densities. Okay, this is a neat paragraph. The old programming and limited linear materialistic and deterministic controlled organic or inorganic models have only focused on a minuscule fraction of existence in its attempts to solve every concern of our emotional and physical challenges. The time has come for us to be in awareness of the vastness to release conformity and to celebrate true authentic freedom of our soul. Rishma's mission is to assist in opening and clearing paths for those souls who are ready to reach out for their highest potentials, possibilities. Oh, I'm going to read this slowly and just feel it in their own North Stars. Lovingly, she walks along and guides parents, children, youth, and she did a session with my 22-year-old as well, and couples to reach out and recognize their own inner knowings of infinite possibilities supporting them to return to the true knowing of who they are. Mm, I tried to read that with passion and heart. Yeah. How'd I do? Very good. <laughs> and there, there was a very beautiful quote inside that she spoke about that, that yes. was given to me by my friend also. So I'm glad that every energy is working and com compiling together. So that's beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. The first question I want to ask you, and this may lead into a whole bunch more, was how did you start to see the great evolution that is happening on Mother Earth and star seeds and all of that? Uh, I would say I I experienced that since very young age. Okay. Because I was feeling a lot of changes in physical body every time there would be a vibrational discord going on on earth and I could not understand that and since childhood I used to speak with a lot of energies which I could not understand that either and my mom used to say oh she has her own moments like you have to give her space away <laughs> and, so where, where um, did you grow up I grew up in India in okay Mumbai. that's where you're originally from yeah I'm originally from Mumbai but I left at a very young age and then lived in almost five to seven different countries for a lot mm. of different times. And then eventually we came to United States and that's where a lot of things shifted because my son was born here. Okay. How old were you when you moved to the States? Uh, my son is 23. So okay. you figure, yeah. I just have to ask you this question. When you moved here, not knowing where else you had lived, was it a little bit of a culture shock or had you lived in other places no. in Europe, for example, no. that it was just like, okay. Yeah, it was, it was actually very comfortable because okay. I didn't fit into my culture back home. And that's why I was always a black sheep because wow. I didn't fit into that culture. Uh, however, after working with star seeds for so many years, you understand that we all are always planted in the places where we are required. Yeah. So now we understand why we are born at a place or where we lived most of our lives, at a place where I'm loud enough. Yeah. And uh, that's how things shifted. 
so how with you seeing things and feeling things when you were younger, you always had a knowing yet when, when was your clarity? If I'm saying that, it, hopefully that makes sense. When, when did you come to see, oh my gosh, things are different. Oh, I, I've been feeling this way for so long. Now, now I really understand it. Oh, that was as soon as my son was born. Okay. Yeah. Around 23 years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I used to take walks, of course, like every pregnant woman would take walk with your babies and start talking to their child. And I used to talk to my baby all the time. And those times I used to see so many um, formations and rainbows. And the moment I would talk some things, there would be some climatic changes. There would be some kind of an affirmation from the surrounding of wherever I am. Um, Birds would start coming to me or rainbows would start coming to me. Even when I'm walking by the city and... Uh, yeah, that's that's when I when I felt that something is going on. Okay, so then then what happened? How did how did you develop further into into this? Since birth, I was always very intuitive, mm-hmm. but I could not verbalize what I was feeling. I was mm-hmm. not very vocal about my feelings. Mm-hmm. Very strong introvert because every time if I would say something people would not really understand so that retained that made me retain my information inside when my son was born somehow we both started telepathically communicate from the womb and that shifted everything and I said okay there has to be some kind of something going on which I'm not aware about Always, excuse me, always believed in higher powers because of the energies coming in and out and interacting with them. But one-to-one was my first connection due to my my pregnancy when my son was born. And then he was hardly six, six or seven months old. And if I would take him out in a stroller and if I would go to a store to buy something, he would put his hand or fingers towards the direction of what I have on the list. So that was kind of like, oh, what is going on? First, I thought it's a child. It's just almost a year, year and a half at the most. Till then I noticed because he learned to climb before he learned to walk. Whoa, so that, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. As a parent, what was... What I mean, I you was sh- like, had to be like, oh my gosh. Yeah, I was like, something is wrong with my parenting. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I've been there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I thought something is wrong with my parenting. And I'm like, I must find out what's going on. But time flies when you're raising a child and you don't focus on those things. And finally, a year and a half or so, instead of saying mom, the first word he said, moon. And I said, I said, okay, there is something here, which I'm not getting. And by then he was, of course, crawling and walking and he would start going and touching in the store, as I said, instead of just pointing or leaning towards like a baby. So before you would even go to something on your list, he would already be there. He would already be there. And he would, he was a very quiet child too, but I'm extremely happy, thank God. And uh, he would always connect with people and people would always respond to him. And I'm like, unusual, unusual. And that's when I started noticing there is something going on between him and I. And that's where the star seed journey started. Okay, so people would respond favorably? Favorably, always. He's a baby, right? A little child. And they would be really kind and we would be playful. There would be times when people would be annoyed, but not because of anything the child does, but because of their projection. And I, I know how to ignore that. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, I remember once when we went to Quest Diagnostic and I was very, very concerned that he was not comfortable. 
like he for just a regular check something doctor said just go get something checked up mm -hmm. and once we went there and he was like he kept crying and crying and he was never a cry baby eventually we just came out without anything i said i'm not doing it so his soul already knew that this is big pharma nonsense <laughs> so we are not indulging in that so wow. we didn't go that route ever again. So things like that, like small spurts in the day through his growth, everything he would, he would all, his soul was so advanced. He would always tell me what's going on. And I said, okay, now somebody is in sync with me. Thank God it's my child, you know? And that's how the journey started. Wow. So he was essentially your your teacher or your yes yes okay uh, yeah a very strong anchor because he was homeschooled being a profoundly gifted son mm -hmm. and because of that I, we met a lot of homeschooled students so that's how we started working together and that's how i understood that most of the homeschool mothers are very intuitive and and the reason why i say is that Every mother knows the best what is right for their children, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody, I, I, I feel that the mother knows the best, like, and that's how I work with them, bridging them also that the mother knows the best. However, we can just be there as a conduit, as an extra set of eyes to see it from outside, to know that if we could be of any support or any kind of guidance. So when we were going through the homeschool years, first it was, to get them tested to see they do not fit in the right school mainstream school system yes and then you start wondering like oh my god is there anything wrong with it and you said no that's because the child is profoundly gifted so then you start catering to them because even profoundly gifted gifted special aid children any of these right the labels what the society has given them they are not necessarily academically advanced or slow or diverse Mm -hmm. But they they are specifically thinking outside the box because they are hardwired. They are hardwired differently. They are not, their brains do not necessarily mean they study two years ahead of the rest of the class. No, but they, they learn differently. Their learning mm -hmm. patterns are different. Their communication styles are different. And when people do not have, because it's an overstimulated society we live in. Oh, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So when when people do not have the so-called quote unquote time or understanding of how things are, then they start labeling them with ADD, ADHD. And I have always said to everybody that, in my opinion, it, they are just a jumbled up alphabets. They are not really labeled suitable for that child because a four year old is going to dangle feet and play. Because mm -hmm. his innate nature is to play. You cannot label the child as having any kind of deformation of thought pattern. No, you let the child play, he would not come and dangle his feet in the chair. Simple as that, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that's where the entire understanding of working with star seed started. Because we all are star seed, you're a star seed, I'm a star seed, our children are star seeds. Because apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and the way how they have been, they have been conditioned is that's one of the reasons why my son was homeschooled in the most of his his younger age, mm -hmm. and then high school he decided to go to the mainstream. That's another story. And oh wow, yeah, he said I want to experience the mainstream school system before I go to college. Okay, so that was respectfully accepted between both of us saying, okay, let's work it out. However, I did notice that children who were young adults who I work with, who have been homeschooled, they are different, mm -hmm. not necessarily antisocial and the rest of the labels given to the homeschool children, of course, but they are different because their thought patterns are different. They've been raised differently. Not necessarily, they've been rushed every morning and evening out, in and out of the house because the school bus or have to go in time. Because sleep is a bigger conduit of growth for any brain and body. Mm -hmm. Nurtured and nourishing food is the bigger conduit for yeah. any, right? 
Oh yeah. So so these kind of things gravitated us towards understand more about how star seeds operate because everybody is from different. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Can you give your definition of a star seed? For me, particularly, mm-hmm. star seed means somebody. We all are from different planetary positions, but we all come with different kind of soul purpose. And for me, star seeds means someone who is designated for certain roles, which is not only from this earth. In a nutshell, rather than giving you the entire class of what is a star seed, right? Mm-hmm. So, in a nutshell, I feel star seeds are are gifted beings. Everybody is gifted. Every child is gifted because every child brings something special to this planet. These these specific conduits know their purpose more deeply and they are tailor-made by the divine, by the source, so that they can proceed in such a way that they can bring their gifts to uplift the rest of the community, humanity, their family, their environment, for earth. Okay, let me ask you this question too. Um, There are several star seeds that I work with as well who are huge amounts of depression, anxiety. And of course, I also believe that the powers that be, the not so great powers that be, want them to really feel disconnected and feel so getting, helping them get through all of this so they can find their soul and, and their purpose and why they are here knowing, you know, uh, video games and pornography and, and social media, like all of that is just, I mean, it's just dished out and thrown on them essentially. So I think homeschooling, like it, again, I didn't know about all of, all of this when my kids were younger, I would have changed so much about what I did. And I, I remember, I'm just going to talk for a second, going into the schools and also noticing what they were serving them for lunch. And mm-hmm. I was like, you, it's processed sugar. Mm-hmm. And then where do you have ADHD problems? So my kids, like I tried to change things, nothing ever seemed to work. So I'm like, okay, well, they're just going to bring their own lunch to school. Cause mm-hmm. there's no way we're going to be mm-hmm. eating that. So uh, the, a lot of the older folks that you work with, is there a lot of clearing all this garbage off of them first? Or do they, do they come to you at all different levels? Like some co, I know I'm supposed to do something. I know. Yeah. How, how do they approach you typically? Or is it always Usu- different? Usually word of mouth. Okay. Because I, I'm not really very good on advertising. I get word of mouth people. Mm-hmm. And uh, they come because they their so-and-so has tried and tested. And then they come, the parents come and they come and meet first. Then they see if I'm the right fit, of course, because they're handing over their loved ones, right? Yeah. And uh, then we meet the child or sometimes the parent come with the child or the young adults. Okay, Usually so typically the comes. there's yeah. a challenge or there's some something that the, the medical world can't fix or the medical world, it, it's just not a fit. Why, why, do they, why do they come to you though? Uh, food allergies, mainly they okay. come for food allergies because food allergies, as we just spoke briefly before about diet, mm-hmm. diet has got everything to do with our first brain, which is in our gut. Mm-hmm. So food allergies is a uh, prime reason. Second thing is behavioral situation mm-hmm. and misconduct of power and authority within the dynamic of the family. Okay. Yeah. So young adults usually come because they have discord between the parents and themselves. So as you just said about video games or pornography, usually they come for disconnect with their loved ones. And my job is to bridge them between the parents or the institution, wherever they are having and feeling discord. And uh, it usually works out well. They have substance abuse or video game. Video game is their way of zoning out. Yeah. But they are always listening, right? They know what's happening in the background. They are, when when any child gets into video game zone out, they are getting into theta brainwave. So when they get into theta brainwave, they are working at a different frequency. So that's home for them. And when they work that way, 
they are kind of being evasive about mm -hmm. what they don't want to feel. And it's the same about substance abuse. The reason why they take up any kind of substance abuse is because they want to be evasive of what they don't want to feel. And that little phase, just like an alcoholic person, right? That little phase makes them feel disconnected. That is a relief for them that they don't have yeah. to face it. So it's the same situation, but um, they are extremely, even everybody in today's world is expecting things out of our young ones. Do this, don't do this, let's do this, go here, don't eat this, watch this, don't do this. At the, at the school also, do this homework, this is how oh. it's to be done, blah, see, blah, see, blah. That little, little precious life has nowhere to go. So then they start giving out negative behavior, then they start giving out actions which are not acceptable by the family and they call it oh he's not listening she's not listening and and the disconnection the discord starts but if we can give a kind ear from the young age of the child growing up and if the child feels heard and attended to because the basic human nature is to be acknowledged imagine i'm I come to you and you come to me and we both yeah. meet each other and we don't acknowledge each other. We're not right. going to see each other again. So <laughs> how can the child is not going to be feel, how can he or she not feel disconnected or disrespectful rather than that, just unwanted? That's where the programs of the childhood starts. Mm -hmm. So that's where my job is when people come to me answering a question long. That when they come to me, that's what I find out where the discord is. And that's where I start bridging them. Okay. And I also believe, tell me your thoughts on this, that the children, well, for so many reasons, I feel like that's why they're also being taken advantage of in crazy mm -hmm. ways, mm -hmm. uh, because there is such light. There is such connection that is automatically there when they come into this earth. So I, they, it's so important on such a bigger scale right now in terms of developing that, in terms of letting them see the truth of who they are. How can you, can you tell us of, um, if this is okay to talk about one of your best experiences with a client? I don't even know if you can divulge that if that's private or yes yes it's private but i can give you an example okay like there was a family where the brother and sister they both were completely disconnected from from the parents okay now the of course the mother loves the child the, okay can you give us an idea how, how old they were he was uh, 16 at that age okay. i think so so he came and he 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 said, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with them and I want to leave the house. And that's what the tough situation was because to, it was already out, one leg was out of, one foot out of the door, kind of. Right. So to re revert back and to connect them back, there was a lot of back and forth, excuse me. And the mother was not very open because of her inner wound. Because everything about our wounding is inner child wounding, right? So to work with her first, to work with her on her inner wound, inner child wound, and heal her first, took me a long time to keep the younger one in balance. Because you cannot tell them to be on a pause till your mother is healing. However, you have to keep both of them engaged in such a way so that there is no disconnection or the child does not just walk out. Eventually he did once he finished his high school and then he did. But now he's come back. The discord is gone. So it's it's a win-win for both because the mother and the family is very well connected. It took it took almost two plus years, but it revert back so the diligence was required and their commitment to each oh, other gosh. was also very essential right yes okay my I, I you've met Tatum I feel that she's she's oh she's uh so expansive Beautiful. 
Oh, no, thank you. Beautiful. Thank yeah. you. So when uh, we moved to Ohio, so I'm not originally from here. I can't remember how it should, was. It's not like four and a half. Um, I was drawn to my current mentor right now. And I remember taking Tatum as a young child and basically being, here's Tatum. How can you help her? And she looked at me and she goes, oh, she brought you here. What? There's nothing. And I I had already been in all the spiritual stuff too. And there was a part of me going, oh, well, there's nothing wrong with wrong with me. And that wasn't what I was thinking, but it was so much. She was my greatest teacher. Like I would not be to the level where I am, if you want to call it that, without her. Because essentially she was a mirror of me. So I had to really, and it's funny that I'm doing this meditation mindful work because essentially I would just have this little being in front of me who knew exactly what triggers to push on me, who would make me essentially be so meditative, so mindful with, you know, this, you know, I could, I could work with you out here knocking on my door and all these other clients, but my child, that was to be mindful, to be calm with her. And I was able to do that, yet it took work. It wasn't like, oh, we do one session, we're all done and we're, we're finished. It was, and it's, it's been, I, I still go to my mentor and still bring Tatum because, you know, it's, it's, it's an ongoing process mm. and it's just beautiful and lovely. Can, because your story about losing your memory is so, can we go into that for a second? Tell, tell everybody what, what happened. Oh, 2017 onwards, I started losing words here and there. The alarm was a couple of, most of the time, while teaching, I would forget Ooh. keywords. Oh. Yeah. And then if I'm addressing my son, I would forget my son's name Ooh. somewhere if I'm talking. So that was very alarming for me. And it con- it it continued till it went on till 2020. And in 2020, by 2020, I would say, it was all wiped off. And that gave me a panic attack. The only thing I remembered was, thank God, my son, how to drive and how to cook. Okay, so explain that in detail. Like you, would you wake up in the morning and just be kind of comatose or how, or no, no, could you function? I would, yeah, I would, I could function, but on the limited scale, like as okay. if you're frozen, but I could not read that aside, write or go deeper into my book, which I had started the year before. Okay. I could not read. It would be very taxing to read any human language. So my communication could not continue because I couldn't remember any vocabulary. So explaining what I want to say was, I was like a to, like a child who has a lot of ideas but does not know how to ver- verbalize them. So that was very difficult. Okay, uh, so your your mind worked okay, but mm-hmm. just getting it out mm-hmm. It mm-hmm. wasn't happening. Yeah, it was a completely rewiring reset i would call it Mm -hmm. and because i did not know the reason at that time i i was under panic for almost a year year and a half and then i found out thank you then i found out that it was a spiritual reset most of the people who get go through a spiritual reset it's Mm -hmm. a rebirth reset and death the whole cycle oh i had one of those yep Right. So how, how did you figure that out? Did you figure it out? Did it come to you on your own or was someone helping no, you? Nobody was helping me, but you start noticing, you you hear it. Somebody says, oh, I, I lost my memory, but it was a reset. And somebody else says, I lost my memory, but it brought me spiritual awakening. So then you start putting two and two together. Okay. So w- how what happened next, I guess, is the best question. So you were at this point where luckily your son could really help with things because at at that point, it was just the two of you guys together, correct? Oh, he was, he was at the college. So I was all alone. (sighs) And it was, yeah, it was, it was a tough call for me. And 2020, the shutdown, uh, they were sent back. He was an exchange student. He was in Italy at that time. Oh my gosh. And they had, they were sent back. So he came back and, uh, 
he was devastated and I was going through a hard time and I was like holding it for both of us together and he was holding it. We made it happen. We are a good team. So it was fun <laughs> growing oh up together. <laughs> okay. So when, when he came back, like, did he know that you were having some challenges? No, I was no, he... him know. <gasps> so he got home and there you, there you, I, I, I not yeah, a vegetable, going, but just. Yeah, kind of. He was, he was not, un, he could not understand for almost a year or so that why couldn't I talk the way how I used to be. And he kept saying for almost two years, I've lost my mom. I've lost my mom. So how did you go to the grocery store? Did you just go and pick up things and not when yeah, you're checking out? Just, yeah. yeah. So, no, so because it, you have self-checkout, right? That's how I used oh, to self-checkout all the time. So and you even could, if you go, like if somebody is scanning, you don't have to have communication. That's true. Okay. okay, so you knew what was going on. You could take care of yourself, but you just couldn't communicate mm, your needs. Mm, mm, so it was almost like you were trap, trapped. Trapped. And your body in a sense. Yeah. It was interesting because my my son was going through his, because they were just thrown out of Florence, wherever they were in Mm -hmm. Italy, and they were not given any explanation because of the shutdown in 2020, March, and they had to be out. And then, of course, everybody went through the same thing. No colleges were really teaching. Mm -hmm. And they went through that entire cycle. And then again, when he went to the like subsequent year in in September, go back to the college, and that time he didn't know what was going on. I would not tell him and burden him because it's not his burden. And we, I'm a single mom, Eden, so you yeah. don't want your child, and he's the only child. So I don't want him to be not paying attention to his life, you know. And he's the same, like he we are a good team. Yeah, we are a good wow. Team. All right. So doing, being by yourself and working with this for a year, a year and a half, is that correct? What the heck was that like? Oh. <laughs> That's a great description for those who are listening. There's just, an, oh, just, yeah. Uh, yeah. It was not easy. It I, was not easy because it was confusion yeah, uh, it was it was tormenting, and it was very frustrating because people wouldn't understand you, and you mm-hmm. cannot explain it, and they would call you crazy anyway. They call us Looney Tunes, don't they? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, I get that anyway. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, and uh, it was not easy. That phase was not easy, Eden. But uh, we are here. We are talking. Yeah. So how did it, did your speech gradually start coming back? How? Yeah. It, okay. How it started was, I would say my earth angels helped me a lot. Mm-hmm. How would I say is that you, I start talking to trees and birds and you, wherever you're not afraid of being judged or mocked about. Mm-hmm. So would go to the beaches very often and play with the ocean and that healed me a lot. And uh, of course, the forests, because they always listen to us. The wise mm-hmm. ones are always there for us. And uh, I still have, these are my best friends. Earth, water, fire, air, ether. They are my best friends. They have brought me where I am today. And and when when... When you can explain now, after all these years, what really happened, people wouldn't believe it. And it's actually, then you wouldn't believe it's the first time I'm saying it out in public. So I'm grateful for you to give me this opportunity. I'm truly grateful. Oh my gosh, that's so <laughs> wonderful. Oh, yes. Okay. So when it started coming back and you started being able to form words, like what? you felt and here and here could come out how how slowly did it happen and, and knowing that you had, had had nature was your friend essentially that nature really helped you get back into it so how what what went on from there uh slowly i could connect our three master cells right heart mm-hmm. uh, like brain heart and sacred mm-hmm. these Slowly, I could feel the connection between the three master cells that 
could bring me back to life. And then at that time, I was told that you got a rebirth. So I was shown my image as a two-year-old little child who came in from New Earth. I have it in my journal. I have drawn pictures I used to be able to do at that time because there was no other way I could explain. So I could make some sketches. And uh, that kind of gave me a hope. And then I was fumbling through last three years, you can say, through so many questions. And that's when I found out so many details about me, like why was I such a strong introvert, whatever happened through birth, like when I was in Mama's home. Uh, uh, another fellow brother who explained to me in 23 March that I was in the better Jews Orion situation of being harvested for 20 by two cycle. That's 40 years. That's almost my entire life at that time. Mm -hmm. So then the puzzle started being placed together to join the entire situation to recognize what was happening. And that's resolved a lot of trauma. Okay. Of so confusion. Go, go back to Orion and explain um, that a little bit. Uh, every, okay. Human trafficking and harvesting. It's a well-known situation for people who are awake. And yes. like I, I, I would say it in a nutshell. I met a couple of more women who were in the same team with me. And on the, they were on the next bed with me. And we had the similar situation and similar cycle. So we could communicate of whatever was happening. So that helped trauma bonding, mm -hmm. sort of right? And that helped to communicate with each other that, oh, so we are not completely Looney Tunes. We did experience what we are experiencing. So there have been, there have been times when you, you visually witness it, what was going on, and then the patterns of how you get close to your abuser and why do you trust your abuser? And the reason why you trust your abuser is because you get used to somebody being there. Even though there is an abuse, you're not left alone kind of stuff. It's a very long story. We can talk about it at the end. But in a nutshell, when I found out about that entire, entire pattern of how our life would be and why do we act the way how we act or behave the way how we behave, that kind of gave a lot of peace in my heart because the answers, the questions of 40, 45 years were answered. Like, you know, what is going on with you? You are like in, in completely abyss of nothing, of knowingness, no, not, you know, not knowing anything about it. And that, those things started coming together and I could understand in that, I would say my angels helped me a lot. And actually, angels helped me a lot. Earth angels helped a lot. Nature, of course, Mother Nature helped a lot. And that was where my uh, esoteric and spiritual life got a very strong hold of my soul family. Because most of my soul family is, has not been so far from Earth. And it was difficult to explain because everybody wants proofs and everybody wants, you know, in writing or pictures, they don't understand most of our lives because we live in a holographic society. Nobody, not everybody is aware about it. Most of our, like even our face and our body, our table, a disc, every mass and volume is all hologram. So how do you prove things which were, you know, out of physical mass situation kind of mm -hmm. thing, for lack of a better word. and. It's not easy, but uh, well, yeah. You are here. All right, we're going to go to the meditation in a moment, even though it feels like we've been talking for five minutes, but it's, it's been longer than that. When, okay, so you saying that you're here with me today, that you've been through this rebirth, and this is, let's say, one of the, the first, first that you've been putting your face out there again. And obviously you're ready to put your face out there that this rebirth has happened and given you these tools that you are ready to, to come back 
in a different way. What's, what's that like? Four years it took to come from rebirth to now. But I'm not going to turn around and go back to that. So it's very, it's a sigh of relief. It's hopeful. And there is so much to share with the world, which I know, which I was hiding because of my fears and not being able to explain. And my angels will guide me. My God is guiding me within me, around me, above me, beyond me. So I have nothing to afraid, be afraid of because my peace is in my heart. Wow. My, uh, my experience was two years. So I'm trying to imagine that being doubled. And it, when it took two years for me to quote unquote feel normal again, whatever that is, um, but imagining for four and especially what you went through. So we're so glad that you're here today that you paid for it. Say that again. I'm very grateful. Thank yes. You. Yeah. And that you went through that hardship. And I know there was fear initially, but you, you made it through because it really takes, I would think, because a, a very strong person to Thank go you. through what you went through. And a lot of times we, tell me if you agree with this, have to go through hardship like that to come out the other side and be like, I can pretty much handle anything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I handled that. So. Yeah, yeah, let's go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you could, thank you for seeing me. That oh, day. oh, well, you're welcome. Yeah, I, I, I know I'll be thinking a lot about you when we finish up today in terms of what you went through and how that had to, how that had to, had to be. Can we, I guess, move, well, yeah, move to the Just Be Practice because I know uh, you were, you had talked to me about- May I just say one message. last thing? Please. Uh, I am not at all coming from victimhood. Because, that to me is obvious, but yes, yeah. please share that. Thank you. I want people to know that I'm not the only one and I'm grateful for those energies in physicality or in esoteric or in astral ways to help me to come this far. Because without them, and of course, of course, of course, my inner being, my heart, my soul, my God, within me and above me, I wouldn't have been where I am. So I'm not coming from victimhood. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm sharing it after so many years is because after being coaxed to explain, and I've been explained that, that unless you do not share it, others might feel being victim victimized also. Mm -hmm. So if we share our story, then they do not feel that alone. So they feel empowered to share their story. And it's a chain reaction. That's how mm -hmm. awakening spreads. So not a victim, but on the way to be victorious. Ooh, nice. And I am riveted in terms of what you will share and what your clients will experience from you after you going through Thank that you. reconnection and rebirth and downloading and everything that that now you're sparked to know thank oh, you but eat it i had a full practice sweetheart yeah i had a full practice before this happened so you you are a single mom i'm a single mom you can just imagine mm -hmm. it's not easy to have no practice and then go through this and then this the child is it was it was good trip i'm happy I even wanna, how financially did you do it that too. Did you have savings that you could utilize or? Yeah. And there was, there was a lot of, lot of facets to it. A lot oh, of facets. To it. My gosh. Okay. Now I'm so curious about the meditation that you're going to guide us in today. Shall yes. we go there? Is there anything else you yes. want to add? No, that's good. Thank you. Okay. I'm ready whenever you are. Just be practice. You just want to close your eyes. Okay. Take a Take a deep breath in. One more time. Take a deep breath in. Drop into your heart. Visualize a 24 karat gold plasma ball right in the center core of your heart.
the 24 karat gold plasma ball. Expand that light going through your entire molecular vessel, your heart, your soul. I'm going to interrupt you for a moment. Can you explain what that is or what that might look like? That is like a ball of light, which is a 24 karat gold plasma mash. Mm, okay. Expand that through your heart, your soul, your skeletal system, your muscular system, your fascia. your central nervous system, central circulatory system, central lymphatic system, expand it through your mind, body, spirit by both the hemispheres of your brains, all the ventricles of your heart, and both the sides of your sacrum. Kidneys, adrenals, all the 33 vertebrates, each and every atoms, molecules, each and every nucleus of each and every cellular system. Shine your entire molecular vessel and expand yourself. Your aura will permeate through your skin, your pores. Allow yourself to go outside your molecular vessel. your chair or your bed or your couch, wherever you are sitting. Expand through your room, your home, your land, your cars, everything belonging inside. Seen and seen organic and organic, all the energies, charge them with your light. Harness your power. Harness your existence, your soul signature into your space. Expand as far as you would like to go through your town, your state. The country where you are. Give a command that my energy permeates through earth, water, fire, air, ether, auric, esoteric, etheric and astral fields of mind. Seal your energy fields wherever you have expanded with celestial double diamond white light of Christ Christ Christala for me and for God for whoever wants to. In your heart, you say, I am safe. I am love. I am peace.
and I am joyful of light. Now experience your presence and stay in this state. This is your true divine blueprint. Observe how powerful you are. When you're ready, you can open your eyes. That was great. And I, I also want to tell folks who are listening or watching or whatever, if there's, this is what I do. If there's ever something in a medita meditation that I can't understand or can't conceptualize, I just give it up to my highest good to know that my highest good will know exactly what to do. So then I don't have to think about, well, there's this part or there's that. I just, you can totally relax. And it's so neat too, when you do that, it you you hop along to the meditation, whatever's being conveyed to you, it just, it just works. It's so, so beautiful. The key of any meditation or the key of any spiritual work is complete surrender to the higher self. So if you put your intellect brain mm -hmm. aside for a while, that yeah. is our ego, then you can connect with your higher self, which is your heart space. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yummy. And I liked as soon as you said to repeat to yourself that you are love and you are safe, like my whole body. Every anytime that happens, I just, you know, I'm always relaxed and then I reach another level of relaxation. Mm -hmm. which I'm like, oh, look at that. I just, you know, let go right here in my stomach and my hips. And it's amazing. Hey, thank you so much for thank you. Yeah, for coming here today, for telling us your um miraculous story and beautifully now that you're on the other side of it again I'm so curious how well I, I know but I'm also very curious at how you are going to be helping so many people and I'm gonna show my shirt I wore this specifically for you today of course I love star seed, so I'm showing my star seed shirt um Thank all right you. and I will have your website listed uh oh my gosh what star seed oh oh starseedsparenting.com so Rashma Shaw out of New Jersey. And again, we are Eastern time zone. So know that as well. Okay. Is there anything <laughs> else that we need to know? No, or, that's we... good enough. Okay. Starseedsparenting.com is good enough. That's great. All right. Hang with me just for a second. We'll, uh, so you and I can say goodbye together, but to everybody who's watching and listening, thank you again so much for joining. And as always, another new show next week. Oh, well, hello. Here we are again. Ooh, that was lovely. So thank you so much for uh, Rish. Rish, she said I could call her Rish for coming on the show. All right. I, I want to tell you guys about what happened this weekend. And I'm cur curious with how far I'm going to go. I'm probably going to completely, completely go far. All right. So let me, let me start. Carrie Kay, who was on the show a while back, I watched uh, a beautiful video that she put out about the eclipse and it still stands, uh, I think, through April 22nd, uh, which I'm curious about when we're going to be publishing this one. Yeah, it's a really great video. But uh, part of it is talking about the sun being a portal and how the most important piece for me is that a lot of dark entities, uh, demons or whatever you want to call it, are now trapped on Earth. So listen to that. Then a couple of days later, I ended up having a session with a very strong person. And during the session, some of these demons started showing up. And initially I was like, what the heck is going on? And then realized, or they, they spoke to me too, that they are ready to go into the light, yet they need some help. So here we are sitting here with this guy doing some body work and stuff like that. And then these demons start appearing and working together. And they were all just to let you know, let you guys know, um, slick black. And I, I am not scared by because again, they come, they don't smell that great. Um, they're 
the noises that come from them are not something that, I mean, I mean, it's, it's frightening, yet I'm not frightened. So anyway, they came and work with them. And I was like, whoa, look at this. And, and a part of it is delightful because even just to tell you, I mean, things are changing. I am witnessing the changes. So the next day, I, through some spiritual work that I'm doing, there are so many mounds and sacred spots here in Ohio. So I was going to this, this one mound in Marietta, Ohio. And it's, it's so striking because it's in the middle of a square within a neighborhood. And there's this huge mound. And then there are all these regular graves around it. It's just, and I'll show a picture. It's, it's unbelievable. So I went to the top of the mound and lay down. By the way, when I was driving up there, all the, the demons were in the car with me. It was like a road trip. So they were all with me. So I'm laying down on top of the mound, suddenly seeing these demons fighting with dark souls within the cemetery. Okay. And it was like zombies coming out of the graves. Let's put it that way. And the demons fighting them. And I'm just sitting here looking at this happening going, whoa, this is so interesting. And, and then the mound that I was on saw it, it became like this volcano of white plasma light that was coming out. Okay. This is, this is my everyday. Well, not my everyday, but uh, yeah, happening a lot lately. So while all this was going on, I was like, okay, I'm just going to be here and take a tour of the cemetery uh, because it was a very uh, old revolutionary base. Yet then I, I, I don't know about you, but cemeteries have always felt dark. Like there's a lot of wandering going on. There was a, a time when my former husband's grandmother had passed away and we were putting her to rest, which is just not restful at all in a mausoleum. And I had been doing this work and walking out and there were stairs leading somewhere down below. And it, ugh, uh, it was just dark. It was just dark, demony and dark. So during this process, I also, there were a lot of masonry um, graphics on the tombstones. And then all of these, and hopefully I'm saying this right, all of these obelisks. So the Washington Monument, maybe you know this, maybe you don't, is an obelisk and it brings a huge amount of darkness uh, to Washington. So walking through the cemetery and noticing how many of those are on the headstones. And again, as you know, headstones aren't pleasant. They were toppling down. There's one that was, I mean, again, it looked like it was from a horror movie. And suddenly I, I just realized the the way that we have been taught to bury our dead, to lay them to rest is dark. It creates all this darkness. Um, they do not rest. I, I, I guess I, I'm still kind of in shock about that. And suddenly I, I realize it all too. It's like, I'm in shock, but I knew it all along. I don't know how to say. And I also, when I left the Mound Cemetery, it's called the Mound Cemetery. They were still fighting. and It was okay for me to leave. And I, and there were other people that were there, which I was like, okay, just let them be safe or whatever. I went to another cemetery and I went into it. And first I was like, why am I doing this? Because it was the same thing. Like suddenly I really could see all the darkness and all the unrest that was there. So I, I wanted to get out of there as quickly as possible. The key right now is I don't have an answer for what is the highest good way to do it, yet I'm supposed to bring out that the way we are doing it is not <laughs> is not good whatsoever. And just bring that to people's attention, bringing my experience to to others' attention, because in listening to Carrie Kay, that brought the demons to me because I was open and I knew, um, and I, I've also worked with demons in the past, so I know, again, I'm not frightened by anything uh, in the least now. Uh, so just just to share this crazy but not crazy story with you, so you can assimilate it, so you can discern it, so 
maybe there's someone out there that goes, oh, well, let's do it this way. Or I don't know. Again, cause, create some vibration, create more ascension, more movement. That's my goal. Okay. I think I'm done here. Okay. That was it. All right. See you next time. Bye. Y'all find me on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, True Social, as well as Rumble, BitChute, YouTube, plus a plethora of other audio directories like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. So like, subscribe, do it all. See ya.